Hello and welcome to the Bane Picks video for the Miami Heat at Boston Celtics. I'm your host, Matthew Amato, joined here by my resident NBA expert and uh, now a fellow host, Jason Gilbo. How, how was the experience hosting these videos for two weeks? You know, it was a lot of fun. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed to have to get rid of the interim tag, you know, and you come back in and steal all the glory. But, you know, it's that's just kind of the way it is in this industry. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy to be here when needed. Yeah, exactly. I do nothing and I get all the credit. All right. So we have the Miami Heat once again, uh, six point underdogs. It seems like I, I, I feel like the spread's been similar to that for every single game, but they are up to one in the series. There's all the injury news. Butler seems like he's going to p- play. P.J. Tucker, Strauss, they seem like they're going to play. Um, we've seen some people at the Katina Network get pretty upset with the way these teams are handling their reporting with injuries. Um, but I'm just going to treat this game like everyone's healthy. I, I really am. Uh, how are you looking at it? Yeah, pretty much same thing. The only one that I'm kind of really waiting on is the Robert Williams news where he's seemingly just kind of been game in game out. But like, I agree with you, like Jimmy Butler said he intends to play. He's been kind of doing this all year long where he has been leaving, you know, at points during the game and, and not coming back due to the inflammation. Strews, PJ Tucker, those guys, Vincent, they've been game time decisions basically this entire playoffs and they continue to play. Um, I don't know how healthy, healthy Lowry is, but like he'll probably suit up and still give it a go. Same thing with Tyler Hero. Um, but yeah, Marcus Smart, obviously, you know, we'd hope that there isn't some shock, you know, that he's out. But Robert Williams is probably the big one for me. I mean, their defense and rim protection is so much better with him on the court. But I, I still think the Celtics win, you know, with or without him tonight. Oh, so spoiling the pick here. Are they yeah, going to win by, by seven points? Uh, yeah, I do have I do have them covering the spread. I, I think six seems a little bit, you know, people are going to look at this and go, oh, man, it feels a little bit more, you know, heavy than I'd like it to. But um, the way we've kind of seen these playoffs go and the way teams have handled business, especially after kind of really bad performances, um, I, I think the Celtics can come back here and win by eight plus. And a lot of that comes down to, you know, Tatum just had one of probably his worst games I think I've ever seen him play, not from even just a shooting perspective, but just a ball movement perspective and the way he moved around. I mean, he just did not look like he was ready to play. And offensively, they just, you know, 23 turnovers. Um, I mean, they were just, they were just horrendous on the offensive side and can never get really back into it. So, um, you know, we'll see how healthy the Heat is as well, but I expect the Celtics to come back and bounce back and play incredibly well. And I think they'll have an adjustment for Bama to buy, which they shut down the first two games and then kind of let him carry the way in game three. Um, but I, so I think they'll have a better answer for that because honestly, not having Williams hurts, but, you know, they'll roll out someone else instead of, you know, Daniel Tice for 11 minutes. And I think Grant Williams will have some changes as well. Well, I'll be honest. I, as someone who has been following, the series just because I was on vacation doesn't mean I stopped following sports. I, I truly have no clue what's going to happen. I, I <laughs> I'm not nearly as confident as you are in the Celtics to put it together, just because I feel like any feelings I've had going into any single one of these games uh, between the Heat and Celtics has been wrong. Like first game, I was super on Celtics. They lose. I was like, damn, Miami looked really good. I think they'll at least make the second game competitive. Stay within like eight or nine. They get blown out. And then I'm like, all right, the Celtics are just going to roll through, win 4-1, then they lose last game. It's just been such inconsistency, which is, I don't know, kind of weird for an Eastern Conference Finals where the East was really good this year. These are supposed to be the two best teams. And it's uh, akin to Tottenham and Arsenal playing for fourth place for a Premier League fans. It's like neither one wants to actually win the East. (laughs) It's like they're trying to give it to the other one. So... uh, I've kind of been staying away. Uh, I've been making my money bank on the Warriors and uh, all of their good fortune. So all that to say is I'm just not as confident. I'm probably just going to enjoy the basketball game instead of bet on the spread or total for this one. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, you know, game one, obviously, you know, I was I was on the Celtics coming in and then obviously the Marcus Smart, Robert Williams injuries pushed me back off. Yeah. Um, game two is a bounce back spot for, for Celtics. And then, yeah, I think game three was obviously the shocker. But 
you know, we've seen some just horrendous, horrendous games from NBA teams in the playoffs where they've kind of had one really bad dud. And I think that was obviously the Celtics because, one, they can't do that again in the series. And obviously this game is just – this is going to be more urgent than it was last game just because they can't obviously fall down game three going back to Miami. And I, I think there obviously is a little bit of pressure on them. But I think positively, like, when you look at that second half, like I know Jimmy Butler was out, but their defense played – a lot better. It was just, they started to get stops. It was just the fact that they kept turning the ball over basically every time they get a stop. And I really don't foresee them having 23 turnovers this game and kind of basically essentially pissing the game away that way. Um, as bad as they looked, I mean, a six point loss, like I said, I know Butler's out, you know, it never really felt close, but they did get it to within one at one point. Um, they're going to live or die by the three seemingly like every team in the NBA is at this point, but I, I think obviously with Tatum gets back and I think we see a little bit more of careful play from smart who um, obviously wasn't very careful with the ball with, with four turnovers, but him, him Brown and Tatum, I mean, collectively what 15 turnovers is, is pretty bad. So you going anywhere with the team totals. I feel like 207 as a total total is a little low, but still uh, with Again, my opinion has been a little unpredictable. I'd rather go with the team total. Do you like the Celtics over 106 and a half? I do like them over 106, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we've we've kind of last last week or two, we've been kind of diving into more of these because we've just been taking mostly the Warriors overs in certain games. Um, but yeah, like, you know, 207, like this, this is a number that's hit in all three games um, so far, and like it really hasn't changed much. So I know they're – Sportsbooks are just kind of continuously looking for that big defensive battle at some point here. Um, I think overall we see Boston's offense comes back. I mean, I'm, you know, Lowry's going to obviously get all this praise for who he is and who he's been, but like they're not as good with him on the floor as, as they are with some of the other guys, just when he's not fully healthy. And I think the Celtics will be able to exploit that. Um, I've talked about Jalen Brown and his ability to get buckets against Miami, really all, all these videos all series long and then just during the regular season and Tatum is not, I, you know, PJ Tucker's done a great job on Tatum. Um, but like, I'm not going to lie there. It is a little bit frustrating to see one of the up and coming stars that we continuously talk about as a top 10, top 15 player gets shut down by PJ Tucker like that. Um, a little bit frustrating, but uh, I, I, like I said, I think we see a bounce back game from him. And even if he has, you know, 20 to 25 points, I think his assists are going to be back because that's what's really actually caused the Celtics to take that next step, you know, heading into this game. All right. Let's move on to the player props. And due to all that injury news, it's mainly Celtics players. Um, well, actually, we got Jimmy Butler points. I wasn't seeing that first. So we have a few. I, I don't understand how the data systems work, but they work in mysterious ways where if you get P Jimmy Butler questionable, you can't get player props for the rest of the Miami Heat team because it's apparently you, they're yeah, it's my it's my it's, fault. I, we we've had no issues. We've been we've been doing recordings the night before, the day before. We've had no issues until you show back up in town. <laughs> I mean, I I guess the explanation here is if Jimmy Butler is a surprise out, then his bets are voided and they're worried if you were betting you got some inside information you're betting on other players that won't be avoided. They're worried about that, but they make enough money. Just give us the damn player props. Uh, I don't, nobody knows Butler personally. I don't even think his family knows him personally. Nope, nope. Anyway, what's your favorite player prop? Um, I am going to go with Tatum over five and a half assists at plus 120. And like I said, I expect him to have, a much better night, you know, on the offensive end. He finished with four last game in one of his worst games, and he's been around five or six basically in in the previous two games. Um, in the games really where the Celtics have looked good offensively in one games, he's he's had a lot of kind of distribution where it's it's really worked well for the Celtics offense. And outside of foul trouble, like we can continue to bank on him playing basically lower forties, upper thirties of minutes, and. I, I just expect the offense to be a little bit more flowing compared to last game where it was really stagnant. Um, I think that's going to be the biggest change that we see. And Tatum's going to benefit from that. Six is obviously, you know, a little bit above, you know, what he usually does on an average, but getting plus 120 odds, I think in a game that we're expecting the team told to go over the offense to bounce back other players to get more involved and make shots. Um, I, I think Tatum's numbers are going to be here and they're going to have to be. Yeah. 
I, I think that's fair. Um, I'm going to take a prop that's only hit in one of the games thus far in this series, but I kind of like the situation whether Miami's winning or losing. That's PJ Tucker over one and a half threes at plus 175. It's it's hit one of three. That means you're slightly unprofitable at plus 175 odds if they're for all three games, but he took six last game. And I feel like four to six is kind of where he's going to sit in most games, whether winning or losing. Um, if they're down, I feel like, you know, uh, Miami's going to take a few extra threes, not that they don't take enough already. And P.J. Tucker's going to be the guy um, you want taking those. He went three from six last game. He's feeling it. Uh, it's just really long odds for a guy who I think has the volume and the quality to uh, hit two three-pointers over the course of 48 minutes. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, even going back further, like he's hit that six times this playoffs. Um, he, you know, he can it's he continues to get basically the corner three, and yeah. he's shooting, what, 60% in this series? He shot 40% in the semis and 46% in the quarterfinals. So, like, he's that that's his shot. You know, it's just a matter of the volume getting there. And... Yeah, anytime you can kind of get plus odds, I feel like on some of these corner three guys, like you, you got to take them. I feel like it's really good value. Yeah, exactly. I, I just, it's kind of. I feel like the. I mean, you look through the the playoff since two attempts, four attempts, three attempts, one, four, two, two, three, one. So he is averaging around three attempts, but he got the six last game, brought up brought up the average a little bit, and I, as long as he can get to that four mark, I. I really think he hits two out of four. Um, but again, that's why it's at plus 175. I really don't need... I mean, even if this didn't hit this game and it hit the next one, you're looking at a pretty profitable uh, bet. All yeah. right. Any other player props, Jason? Um, I like Marcus Smart over 14 and a half points at minus 115. Um, it's hitting both of the, the first, you know, the two games that he was healthy. I mean, he's taken 11 and 22 shot attempts, four and 12 threes. Obviously, he was red hot in that game, too. Um, he's going to have a better matchup at, at times, just going against some of these backcourt guys for the Heat, who I'm not particularly high on from a defensive standpoint. I think with Butler and with, with Tucker kind of dealing with Tatum and Brown at times, um, Smart's going to have to kind of be a guy who drives to the basket and, and get to the line a little bit. And also, he's going to have his open threes. Um, you know, like I said, he's taken 16 between the two games. Um, you know, he's not a particularly great three point shooter, but obviously if he's anywhere between 30, 35%, he's going to hit a couple. And I think 14 and a half is actually a really, really decent number. I was kind of expecting maybe 15 and a half, 16 and a half even. So getting this at minus 115, I think is really good value for someone that needs to step up. And I think is going to be kind of not as defensive centered as, as some of the other matchups are. That was my other player prop, so I, I strongly agree with you. I think he <laughs> he's going to be the one kind of left to – they're like – I mean, I don't know how to phrase it properly, but but basically Miami's going to be like, all right, Mar let Marcus Smart beat us. And I think he right. has more than enough talent to, to put up 17, 18, 19 in this game and feel like maybe a couple of those Tatum assists can go to Smart from three – and uh, it'll all work out. Guys I want to kind of bet on, and not necessarily even overs, but Horford, Adebayo, I feel like these would be my guys to go towards if I knew Robert Williams' status, and then, you know, right. add Robert Williams to that mix. They're just so heavily reliant. Like, if Robert Williams is not playing, I think Adebayo still has, like, a decent game. I think Horford, once again, gets a stupid amount of volume because he plays 48 minutes. If Robert Williams is in... I really would like some of the Robert Williams props. I'd like some unders on these guys. It's like, it's frustrating because I feel like I could offer about five or six more bets if if we knew that. But the one guy I left out is kind of hurting um, where I want to go in this game. Yeah, you mentioned like having, you know, basically six, seven guys on the prop sheet right now. But Robert Williams essentially takes two of them away, you yeah. know, because we really, his, his status will, will dictate so much of how we look at their props. Exactly. Any, well, I was going to ask you anything else. I'm going to take a quick look. I mean, yeah, nothing for me. I think that those are kind of the two. Cause like you said, 
what we have now is, you know, pretty limited. And obviously Williams news is going to be big, but, and I've usually like my Jimmy's two steel prop, but minus 135, not, not so much. I was going to say, if you want to hedge your own Celtics bet, maybe you can parlay some of the overs on turnovers. Um, Cause I kind of agree. That's the way they lose again is, it's not even necessarily, I know you were saying like the Celtics just playing awful, which I do think last game that is what happened, but Miami's not a bad defense and they can really cause you to, to make some stupid turnovers. So if Miami's really playing well and maybe, you know, they're within six or winning the game, I bet you, you know, you can parlay the Tatum and Brown or maybe even Marcus Spart and Tatum uh, turnovers and at least get some nice plus 200 plus 300 odds there. Yeah, you definitely could. Because, yeah, like you said, I mean, just this team is still very careless at the ball at times. And, like, they I, – I don't know what's happening. But, I mean, I think this is really a, maybe an epidemic from the NBA in general, but just the dribbling and how bad it can be at times. Because, <laughs> one, they don't dribble properly. And then also just the turnovers and some of the backcourt stuff is really bad. Yeah, imagine if they called traveling in the NBA. I, w- I mean, last night against the Mavericks, there was, like – it was back-to-back possessions. Jordan Poole caught the ball, took a giant leap, two steps, and then shot. And then Donich gets the ball on the other side, catches it, goes around the screen without dribbling, and then shoots. And I'm like, what is going on? It, it, dribbling is literally optional at this point, um, unless you're Clay Thompson in the last two minutes of a of a game. But we won't talk about that. All right. Any more bets before we wrap this up? Uh, no, we'll wrap it up there. All right. Celtics minus six over 106 and a half for the Celtics team total. Those are minus 110, minus 120, respectively. Tatum over five and a half assists at plus 120. Tucker over one and a half threes at plus 175. And Marcus Smart over 14 and a half points at minus 115. Thank you guys for watching. As always, you can click the subscribe button or the bell to get notified when these videos go up. If you like this one, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike, comment down below your favorite bets. We'll see you for the Warriors video very soon.